Hello friends, my name is Sandeep Edasheri. I head the Global Project Management and Portfolio Management for Mobile Surgery Business. I am here to present the overview of project management practices that we follow for product development in Philips. Philips was founded in 1891 in Eindhoven, the Netherlands, to manufacture incandescent lamps and other electrical products. For the last 130 years, we have been improving people's lives with a steady flow of groundbreaking innovations. For the last 130 years, Philips has reinvented itself many times. Currently, we moved away from all businesses to being in the hardcore healthcare segment. Leveraging our expertise and experience in both the clinical space and consumer technologies, we are helping healthcare providers, payers, consumers and companies address the challenges they face by applying our unique ability to develop and deliver solutions that span the health continuum. We would like to visualize healthcare as a continuum since it suggests the notion of continuous care and it becomes very compelling when one thinks of this continuum as being connected. We are convinced that in the connected world, it's vital to take a holistic and seamless view of the end-to-end -end patient journey. At Philips, we are ideally positioned to help the consumers on their health journey and to connect them to their caregivers for the right intervention at the right place at the right time. We want to deliver integrated solutions that join up the dots across the health continuum by helping people to take an active approach to their own health, dissolving barriers and facilitating a seamless flow of data, giving clinicians the tools they need to make a precision diagnosis, and supporting the patient's recovery when they return home. Philips has the depth of perspective across hospital and home needed to break the boundaries, standing in the way of organizing healthcare around the patient. We collaborate on designing innovations to seamlessly bringing people together, data and technology to help our customers achieve their quadruple aim. That is, improving the patient experience of care, improving the health of the individuals and populations, improving the work life of the health professionals and reducing the per capita cost of the health care. We have a very strong position across health continuum to build a company in the health technology. Our professional healthcare and consumer portfolios are increasingly connected and data-driven through Philips cloud-based health digital platform. This positions us to better serve customers, patients, clinicians and caregivers in an increasingly connected world. We turn possibilities into great innovations. Royal Philips currently consists of about 59,000 patent rights. 31,000 trademarks and 89,000 design rights and 3,100 domain names. Philips has filed 880 new patents in 2020 year alone with a strong focus in the growth areas in the health technology services and solutions. In July 2020, Philips was 23rd ranked in the Boston Consultancy Group's Worldwide 20 as the top 50 most innovative companies survey. Philips ranks as the most innovative medtech company and it is one of the only 162 companies to have ever appeared in the list in its last 14 years of publication. The Derwent Top 100 Global Innovations Report identifies the world's most innovative organization, those that successfully develop valuable patented innovations with a very strong commercialization potential based on their market reach and impact on the downstream inventions. In, Philip, in February 2021, Philips was named as a Derwent Top 100 Global Innovator in annual analysis of the global innovation ecosystem. And we are winning since last eight years. We'll talk more about the way what we do in HIC, which we call it as a Healthcare Innovation Center in Pune. Philips is addressing the needs by delivering the quadruple name across the health continuum. HIC Pune has got two cluster representation, that is image guided therapy and precision diagnosis. As you can see, we have a wide range of products developed from HIC Pune. We have one R&D center in Pimpri, which employs about 900 plus people, which is housed in 125,000 square feet with in-house labs. We also have a world-class manufacturing plant with an industry 4.0 standards in Chakan, which employs about 400 plus employees and has a leading certification to ship to more than 100 plus countries. HIC Pune has a unique value proposition by having end-to-end -end product development team set up in one location, starting from innovation, R&D, marketing, customer service, regulatory, procurement, project management and operations, 
which enables quick decision making and faster product development. Our journey in HIC has started way back in 2008-9 when we acquired a small company called Alpha where we first laid our footprint in India. Over the years, we increasingly increased our footprints to create our own space. And in the year 2015, we completely moved our R&D facilities into Pimpri office. It was the year 2017 when we set up the complete transfer of mobile surgery business to Pune. And in the 18-19, we transformed the project management office. And over the last few years, we have been successfully delivering the products to the customer. Now we'll talk about what mission we have in the project management office. Our mission to the PMO office stands for to provide an organization-wide approach to identify, prioritize, and successfully deliver on the committed scope, time, cost, and quality for the products that are aligned with the Philips strategic goals and objectives. We also act as an integration point to the management and overall project status by proactive measurement methodology and risk mitigation. From 2014, mobile surgery business started as an in-house product development from HIC Pune. However, it was in the year 2017 when we had the full team onboarded. We transferred the business from the Netherlands and a separate PMO function was set up. In 2018, we deployed a visual project a uh, concept called Obaya, which is a Japanese concept of closed room. But we failed to capitalize the effectiveness of this. Quickly readapted and readjusted our core basics and started deploying core project management teams for moving from reactive to proactive. But in 2020, COVID stuck, and as a PMO function, that has a dependency on several internal and external factors, we readjusted, repurposed our teams, not to leave the fort unattended, but rather took it this as a positive challenge and came out stronger. In the year 2021, we decided to move to become predictive, and a lot of emphasis was on the way how we work and how we deliver. It's important that the basics are well defined. Most important is how we are set up for the day. On the approach, we are looking at the solutions instead of cribbing on problems. Whenever it is repeated, we do a structural approach to do pride. We ensure the right resources are there at the right time and a very strong team core team is placed for making a very committed decision making and this becomes our integral part of our approach. We drive daily management through daily stand-ups where we focus more on the functional planning deliverables and we make decisions based on the data. Nothing is right in the project management unless we have the right communication channel in place. As a PMO function, it's, a, it's our responsibility to make sure we have the right communication to the right stakeholder at the right time with the right content. We are one team and we have one goal. Finally, we have to win. There are problems that will come uncalled in for especially in the new product development cycle. That's where we embrace this problem and convert it into project, into opportunities. Our goal is to efficiently deliver the projects through faster and smarter execution. While our journey has evolved from being from reactive to proactive, and now we are predictive. There is a famous saying, what got you here won't get you there. Hence, it's important to manage the futures. In this disruptive world, launching products faster with a higher predictability becomes the key. If we lose this, there is another supplier for the same customer. In pursuit, we have already began our predictable journey and over the next few minutes, I'm going to share how we are driving predictability to our execution. Becoming predictive in project management is the need of the hour. So what we have done in Philips is we are focused on four different themes which can bring predictability in project management. The first one we are talking about is the integrated live planning tool, which focuses on bringing MS project online into a Teams network and by having a real-time risk management and real-time dashboards embedded into one folder, which is commonly accessed by the entire core team member in a live and transparent way. Second, we are talking about leveraging the process, which talks about our PDLM, which is our new NPA development cycle. PDLM stands for Product Development Launch Maintenance. We are also leveraging Kaizen, Pride, and VSMs throughout the cycle of the development to ensure wherever we have an opportunity, we improve it. As a continuous improvement practice, we also practice peer reviews that helps us to understand the best practices deployed in other Philips organization. At the same time, share our best practices to them for taking it as a global benchmark standard. 
we have an extremely high focus on project managers individual career development for that we have a unique uh, concept called epm which stands for entrepreneurial project management where we want the project managers to become a world class project managers by upgrading their core skills and epm skills in a very structured and constructive way we have our own philips uh, certification model which starts from the foundation going all the way to the top ipm and we have a very structured methodology to assess and grade our officers we also leverage the budding talent by hiring interns from the world class uh, universities by giving them opportunity to experience what project management is all about in a real time environment and if they are really successful you observe them as a full time employee in our organization finally nothing goes without having a culture in place so having the right culture of engagement understanding from the customer understanding from our people becomes our need to assess are we doing the right things at the right time at the same time it's important that what we do is also reflected in our objectives and our uh, goals so that we don't have two different mechanisms to measure what we do and how we do overall this predictive project management is built on the foundation of the project management on the pembok standards we'll get into details now to explain what exactly this is the integrated life planning tool means when we talk about plan we have developed a unique ms project online integral plan integrated with the microsoft teams this is real time and all associated deliverables supporting this plans are linked into the same tab so that we have one source of truth across all core team members this access is given to the core team members that means the entire core team has got access to this and no outside member can have an access to this as well that means we have one source of truth which goes across all and as you can see in this slide the timing becomes very critical and we have a real time counter that shows the available time to accomplish the milestone so as we said as a one team one goal concepts to bring the efficiency together this becomes a very common objective to accomplish the milestone as we committed we are talking about the plan as you can see the cells are masked for confidential data purpose but what is highlighted important is this is a typical ms plan but it's a live web version that means the common members can access this plan across web unlike in the standalone ms project where one guy has to update the task this has replaced with the core team member who real who updates this task progress on a real time basis as you can see some of these percentages are zero some of the percentages are 100 some of the work is in progress how this is coming is each of these works has been deployed into planner task now planner is also an online task where each of these work streams has been divided into the respective task details so the completion of the task details shows the progress of the project what we have and this gives a real time update of how much work is pending for us to complete the uh, project milestone example of one task which also shows how we monitor the task is also shown so that the repository of the task accomplishment is also recorded so that tomorrow we have a repository of the details what exactly went in closing the task we are talking about the risk register now this is a real time risk registers we are deployed as a part of the click view click view is a tool we have adapted in philips you can see the heat map of the risk which shows the temperature ranging from the high risk high probability the low risk low probability and the occurrence and the severity both the monitored in terms of time and money the risk register has got a details where each risk is having a right contingency measure and a mitigation measure also it has a accountability due date and this gives us an alert 14 days before to the risk owner that this risk is going to get due you need to take action on it so this is again a more proactive basis to address the risk concern and this becomes a predictive analysis for us to make sure if the risk are addressed in time we have a better chance of closing the project also on time what you see over the next is the defect management dashboard this is again a directly live defect dashboard taken directly from our tool like i said earlier quality is first and we don't want any defect to pass through the cycle unnoticed there is a separate team that ensures defect are addressed in the development cycle and it is not bypassed this is also an important parameter during our gate reviews we keep reminding that this product is will be used by a patient of how one defect can prove costly to him if we don't address this now that customer can be me 
or my family member as well. I'm not going to talk more on this. This is all about the document dashboard. But again, just as an example to show how master list documentation is uh, progressed. And this is also directly coming from the tools of how many deliverables are complete and how many are pending. We're talking about the supplier partner development dashboard, which talks about how are we ensuring that quality of the product coming from the supplier is ensured. We have a lot of process established at Philips, but it's important that these follow uh, processes are well established to the suppliers, making sure they understand our process, making sure they comply to this process. To have effectiveness in place, we have this dashboard which measures the each and every important critical parameter that defines success to the product. Again, like I said, quality comes first. There is no compromise on the quality. So it's important that supplier also understand our quality aspects and they're ready to deliver. Few of the red, yellow, green are leading indicators for us to go into details, fix those problems, and make sure the part is compliant to quality as per our requirements. Next, we're talking about the financial dashboard. Financials are protected, but again, in the system driven, a lot of our controls on how effectively you spend money and monitor the ROI during the product development phase. Tracking this monthly will help us to see uh, basis the plan versus the actual how much we are spending and the forecast we have for the rest of the period. This gives a very good discipline of not overspending it or spending the money more judiciously. And uh, we are also measuring this for the FT cost, NRE expense and tooling expenses. There are a lot more dashboards that we use, but in the interest of the time, we are moving to the next auctions where we are talking about our entrepreneurial management project management skills. And over to you, Karthik, for explaining more on that. Thank you, Sandeep. So let's talk about entrepreneurial project management. In Philips, the approach to unlocking entrepreneurial project management potential equips the project and the program managers with what they need to succeed. There are effective assessment tools for project managers and program managers in Philips where the skills or the benchmark levels of the project manager skills are identified and the gaps are assessed and there are individual development plans which are connected to their goals and objectives which are assigned to the project managers and program managers and also to apply and learn they have entrepreneurial skills toolkit that act as entrepreneurs in their day-to-day -day work so let's talk a little bit more about why entrepreneurial project management so here's an overview of the philips entrepreneurial project management skills we have 10 skill areas first one emotional intelligence Second, ownership and commitment. Third, Philips leadership asks. Fourth, the stakeholder partnership. Fifth, network performance. Six, business acumen. Seventh, customer centricity. Eighth, judgment. Ninth, risk management. And tenth, learning agility. So let's dive a little bit more into these 10 skills and what it means in Philips. The first one is emotional intelligence where we would like to improve on one's own emotions as well as sensing the people's emotions and dealing with the pressure and the setbacks. The ownership and the commitment is about committing oneself to the project objectives, taking full ownership of the process towards the value-based and impactful outcomes. The servant leadership skills guides and motivates the team members as well as everyone around the team to achieve the project's objectives where you support the process. The stakeholder partnership is where we invest time in stakeholder partnership skills and become trusted advisors to the people in and around the projects using relationship management, communication, and influencing competencies. The fifth one is the networking performance, where you realize that you have a well-knit PM community to support in entrepreneurial project management and program management. The next is business acumen, looking outside the project and knowing how the project impacts Philips strategy by demonstrating the Philips business savviness. The seventh one is the customs, customer centricity, which obviously taps into the Philips behavior of customer first and meeting the customer demands and being responsive to their feedback. The eighth one is about the judgment. It's all about making the right decisions based on the right information at the right point of time and the ability to know when to take a risk and when to escalate it towards the higher management. The ninth one is the risk management. 
the name says it all. And the tenth one is the learning agility, where learning, researching, and adapting and responding to the change, you know, plays a key role. All these ten skills put together, you know, in Philips helps in developing world-class project managers and program managers. It helps in enabling the project and the program managers develop the entrepreneurial mindset, cross-domain knowledge sharing and learning, increased team performance and employee happiness, and improved customer satisfaction, increased business project value and outcomes through higher productivity, efficiency, and cost savings. In Philips, there is a lot of investment that goes on to ensure that the program and the project managers become world class you know project managers and program managers by means of certain trainings and the philips university portal you know enables that by having certain training programs you know in place and philips is leading the game with regards to that now together we can drive the project management effectiveness and deliver on the business impact and the business value based on Philips strategic objectives, where by connecting the dots, we create the entrepreneurial project management environment by executives, people managers, sponsors, hold each other accountable for the entrepreneurial behavior and take responsibility of our own personal and professional entrepreneurial project management development. So let's talk about Philips project management certification. Philips has a very well laid out project management certification roadmap for the project and the program managers, starting at the foundation level, going to practitioner, expert and master level, which has certain eligibility criteria to be met. Along with that, Philips also encourages all the program and the project managers to get themselves certified with the industry recognized credentials like PMP, PMI, ACP, etc. Now, the project managers and the program manager core skills are assessed, the entrepreneurial skills are assessed, and the skills and the gaps, basically the benchmark, are you know, laid out by means of a spider web and certain effective assessment tools. And there's an overall assessment that is done on the core and the entrepreneurial skills, thereby developing certain individual goals and objectives which are linked to this respective project manager and the project program manager you know, PPMs and in turn, you know, enable them, you know, scale up to becoming global world-class program and project managers. Yeah, thank you. Hi team, uh, let's talk about uh, employee engagement. It's very important to collect the voice of the employee, right? Voice in the sense of voice of individual for continuous enhancement. Uh, how we do it in Philips is uh, we do it on a quarterly basis. Uh, there are various parameters for which we do it on, uh, specifically focusing on the areas of engagement and engagement drivers. Engagement drivers has three elements into it, which is the agility, uh, collaboration and alignment, right? Uh, it's very important to also understand what is the best in class internally. At the same time, it's important to understand what's best in class at a global level. So we actually end up comparing our scores at, uh, you know, uh, the top uh, Fortune 75 as we call it. And then we look at those scores on a quarterly basis so that there is an element of continuous improvement built into it. Uh, that same thing then transcends itself into the performance management system. In the performance management system, what the piece that is focused on is not only the business goals, right? But it's also on the how piece. How in the sense of what? There is obviously a framework in place. What does the framework talk about? The framework talk about talks about two things. One is Philips behaviors, right? The second thing is we obviously have people managers. For the people managers, it's on the leadership asks. That's not all. You also need to be focusing on your own developmental goals. So that's on the how piece of it. The what piece is equally important, right? Which is the business goals. The business goals is also further divided into further uh, elements of customer first, right? Which is what is it that you're focusing for customer? Then there is an element of team goals also other than the regular KPIs. So with that, the performance management system becomes a very robust process where the business goals are also looked at. So is the development of the individual. I joined as an intern in Philips Healthcare Innovation Center in the month of June 2020. 
as a curriculum program of masters in project management from VGTI Mumbai. In year of my one year internship, I was fortunate enough to work with some of the brilliant minds in the field of project management, as well as I got the opportunity to experience the use of various knowledge areas of PIMBOK backed up by well-defined PDLM process. Philips Pune office has been pioneer in the implementation of various innovative ideas to deliver the project in given time, budget, and of course, considering the patient safety as well. So I decided to continue my career in Philips Pune and I got absorbed as an employee after completion of my internship. It's been three months since I've joined Philips as an intern and in the short span of time I've gained tremendous knowledge on how end-to-end -end project management activities are carried out by following the PDLM process. I felt quite astonished to see what I learned in theory is not what is actually practiced and there's a huge difference and I'm really lucky to have this opportunity to work in Philips where I get to see some of the best practices deployed in the area of Pimbok management. We in Philips are using PDLM process for product development. PDLM stands for Product Development Launch and Maintenance. PDLM is an execution machine. At first gate or milestone, the project is initiated. We call it as a PI milestone. Here, the project team is prepared and committed to start. Resources are allocated and the project team has clear understanding of the project charter. Business case and project charters are approved. At VPA, the value proposition is agreed. The integrated and balanced set of business requirements, user needs and concepts have been defined. The initial project plan has been defined and the updated value proposition and business case are accepted. At PDC, product design committed. The high level requirement and the global design are defined. The project's high risk items have been mitigated Detailed plans and test approach are in place. The pro initial project product launch date is committed. At PLC, the product launch committed. Detailed design and engineering's, engineering are finished. Ready to start the final unit and integration test followed by the system test integration. Product launch date is confirmed to the market at this gate. At SWAR, that is start of verification, the product is integrated and tested. The product manufacturing operations and service requirements are ready to be verified at this date. At SVAL, we, that start of validation, the product is verified against the validated product requirements. The product is ready and to be validated against the user needs. The project is ready for final manufacturing and service process validation. At SR, supply released. The product has been validated against the user needs. The supply chain is fully released and ready to produce the customer orders. At RFD, release for delivery. Product can be handed over to customer after passing this gate. The last gate is the project closure. We close this project formally by stabilizing the project, product, supply chain and the manufacturing and disperse the project team. PDLM ensures compliance with applicable regulations. Being in healthcare, regulatory standards become biodegradable and it's prone for strict audits. We need to ensure the traceability exists to smallest part like screw in the system. This is done to protect the customers and being safe. We believe in delivering compliant quality products to our customers. By executing the tasks of the PDLM process and by capturing the process activity outputs into the provided template, compliance with the medical standard regulations are ensured. Proof of the compliance to a specific standard is covered as a part of BMS mapping to applicable standards and regulations to various procedures and templates in our BMS. During execution, we have our management team review the progress every week. Critical risk and critical paths are discussed at details. We have focused meetings to resolve technical challenges. We leveraged virtual Gemba for all critical supplier developments. Live video streams of parts being assembled at the supplier's place were witnessed. Joint collaborative development also helped to deliver our commitment.
We had periodic governance meeting with the top management of critical suppliers with Philips management. This shows the management sponsorship for the product success. TV model. TV model is a development verification and validation model. Like the water flow model, the V-shaped life cycle is a sequential path of execution of processes. Each phase must be completed before the next phase begins. Testing of the product is planned in parallel with the corresponding phase of the development in the V model. However, we believe in daily management. The entire plan as per the schedule is tracked week on week and there is a clear actionable deliverables defined for each week. PMO leader along with few other leaders review the project status every week for the support ask. They provide a solution to ensure the project is doing as per plan. However, not all times we go as per plan. Sometimes there are surprises. But what we know is how to address this problem without compromising on commitment. This is where we exhibit boundaryless behavior of one team, one goal. Since the project targets are also part of our performance objective, this becomes vital for our on-time completion as well. Critical element in the gate review is the rigorness we deploy to see if all the deliverables are met. There is a milestone review that the core team does by completing all the deliverables needed to pass the milestone. Post the core team approval, team moves to get management approval for the gate review, where each phase we check if the project business case and the value proposition are still valid. At any cost, the gates are not approved if any of the deliverables are open. This ensures process doesn't allow any way to skip deliverables and approve the gate. In other words, we are ensuring the product is being developed for the right specification that meets the safety of the customers as promised. Now we talk about continuous improvement. We approached everything we did in, with an entrepreneurial mindset. We used various tools like value stream mapping to bring efficiency in process. Implemented pride sessions to deliver significant improvements adopted problem solving methodologies to optimize the design and reduce the lead time for development. We also ensured that we held ourselves accountable by rigorously monitoring our deliverables through our DM boards. All these became part of our culture as we established a mechanism of driving continuous improvement. Now we are talking about voice of the customer and root cause analysis. In line with the Philips strategy, we put customers first into everything we do. We have Gemba and gathered extensive voice of customer sessions and combined with the market research to gain deeper understanding of the gaps. We further conducted root cause analysis to prioritize these gaps and helped us to define the solutions that we want to bring on to our development work stream. Let me also highlight some of our key accomplishments. Let me also highlight some of our key accomplishments. With COVID, our team took ownership to deliver faster by reinventing the way we did our work. For example, we created an end-to-end -end software simulator that reduced the dependency on hardware and thereby minimizing our effort by 67%. Mobile lead cells were planted that increased the capacity by 100%. Set up remote access eliminated the need to visit the labs and provided 24-7 availability. Design thinking and optimizations helped us to achieve long-term sustainable solutions. Virtual customer engagement helped us remotely obtain feedbacks from surgeons located globally across US and Europe. Thanks, Priti, for giving an overview on the process. We have a very important element called peer reviews. What we follow in Philips is a very structured peer reviews for all the projects. There is a global PMO community who conducts these peer reviews for all the projects on a time-bound basis. The key areas what we focus is there is the end-to-end -end detailed planning, the tools we deploy in project management, technical assessment, design maturity, APQP development, manufacturing readiness, resource management, the KPIs we use, 
the financial discipline we adopt, and finally, the compliance to safety and quality. What we do in this peer review is we share our practices how we do in our project management. Sometimes we happen to hear the best practices deployed in other businesses, and sometimes we share our best practices to the global team. In total, we make a global PMO community to have the best practices being deployed for all the projects for all global organizations. As, is, as you can see in the slide below, this is the global KPI, which is from the global PMO community on where are those different KPIs that is the key focus for 2021. KPI alignment, resource commitment, adaptation to the standards, planning and financials are our important areas to focus on 2021. Thanks, Sandeep. I would like to give a brief overview of Philips Zenition Mobile Siams. A widely successful innovation launched in 2019, Zenition Siam has touched over 350,000 lives in 2020 and is expected to impact more than two and a half million lives by 2025. Used across different clinical procedures like cardiology, vascular, orthopedic, pain management, and many more. This versatile product has garnered wide customer support in a short span. Why not hear it from the customers directly? Again, I would love to you know, provide feedback in terms of the, the ability of this technology to truly transform how we manage patients in the outpatient setting. As a practicing clinician, it's vitally important for us to have the highest quality imaging, the ability to provide not only excellent image visualization, but low radiation dose, ease of use, and quite candidly, what I very much enjoyed with my Philips fixed systems, as well as the mobile systems, is the ease of use and the intuitiveness of the, uh, the controls. I think the ability to innovate and bring that technology rapidly to the bedside is vitally important, particularly in cardiovascular medicine, where uh, we continue to evolve very quickly. And at the same point, it can be a frustration point for clinicians as we see things that are on the horizon to have to wait for two, three, four, five years sometimes for relatively uh, new technology to come, come of age. So again, I applaud you for being able to bring this concept of a bedside control with the tablet, you know, within a very short time frame. And in fact, I would call that lightning speed for what we see in innovation. I've been, you know, practicing in cardiovascular disease for 25 years now. And clearly the speed with which we can evolve and change, provide feedback becomes ever increasingly important, very similar to what we see in, you know, IT across the entire spectrum of healthcare. The Zenition system was launched in 2019. To keep up with the rapidly transforming healthcare space and prioritizing customer needs, faster and relevant innovation was the only answer. Our innovation drivers have increased the OR performances. We have extended clinical application for spine, cardiology, orthopedics, and vascular. The Zenition system is designed as a future fit platform. We have enabled hardware and software upgrades over the period of time to enhance clinical capabilities. The image quality experience from the Zenition system is very similar to high end Allura and Azurian clarity, which drives the outstanding user experience. With a firm resolve, we took up innovation as our machine breakthrough objective of delivering three solutions on Zenition in less than 24 months. Result, a defined solution that we wanted to bring onto our Zenition platform. With the clear roadmap of the solution, we could prioritize the ones we wanted to deliver on Zenition platform. With an entrepreneurial mindset, we adopted and applied the DMAC methodology. As part of project implementation and value addition, we successfully delivered our first solution in nine months, exceeding our target of 18 months. We further extended our innovation strategy by launching two more solutions, taking the total to three solutions in a span of 24 months to address our customer needs. Our team also ensured quality and integrating in everything whatever we did. First one, the touchscreen module, portable side control to the surgeon. This is launched in 2019. The second, Stenbus Mobile, 
industry's first enhanced tent visualization software for mobile CM, launched in 2020. The third, FD3030, critically required on Azanation and is launched in RSNA in 2021. Now, I would request Sandeep to take us forward. Thanks, Deepthi, for giving in wonderful insights on customers and the solutions we have done so far. Wow, I am super excited. This is just the beginning. We have many more in the execution phase that are planned to deliver in 2022 and beyond. A new era of healthcare is emerging, one in which people increasingly take ownership in their health and well-being, supported by an industry that is rapidly transforming and embracing technology in a new innovative way. For Philips, as a company with a real presence in both personal and professional healthcare world, this presents a new opportunity to extend our leadership in the healthcare technology. It's a challenge we are ready for, thanks to the capability and experience we have built up over 130 years as a people-focused innovation company. Products come and go and technologies change. But Philips is still about one thing, creating meaningful innovation that improves people's life. Our unique approach to customer engagement has been co-creating the solutions together, which means it's all about understanding the entire experiences. Experience the flow mapping displays and documents opportunities for improvement. Giving stakeholder a voice. Leveraging the power of data. Co-creating the solutions. That means it's about mutual ownership of the recommendation that improves the implementation of the improved process. Finally, it's all about implementing and transforming. We have a very high ambitious target for 2025 for sustainability which means we are focused on health and well-being for all, we focus on circular economy, and we plan to generate 25% of our revenue from circular products and services and solutions. We are also taking efforts to improve the climate actions. That means we want to reduce our CO2 emissions with a 1.2 degree global warming scenario. We want to leverage partnership to deliver a sustainable value and drive global change. We want to be enablers in this whole journey by designing 100% of our products and services in line with the eco-design requirements and eco-heroes amounting to 25% of our revenues. Our learnings from this journey has been reinvent, which means customer first, reposition by preparing for the future and also adapting and collaborating across Philips and reconfigure to become a solution provider. When we were challenged to bring solutions, we redesigned the entire ecosystem around the customer first needs because of the laser focus we have on the customer first behavior. All in together, it's our purpose to improve the people's health and well-being through meaningful innovations. We aim to improve the lives of 2.5 billion people per year by 2030. Thanks a lot. As shared in the beginning, we are already on the predictive project management phase. We have a lot to accomplish in the coming days. We are leveraging the best practices available for us to be competitive and be the market leader in product development innovation. I would like to thank the organizers of PMO Global Alliance for providing me an opportunity to share the best practices we deploy in Philips. Thanks again. This is Sandeep signing off, wishing everyone a very happy Christmas and a happy new year.